in the dark. It is. He's really standing here, ladies and gentlemen. This is Christoph right next to me. Hey! So, um, this actually was another sold out audience, so congratulations, Chris. That makes five for Minnesota Film Makers. Thank you guys for coming. So, Chris, um, a lot of, you know, most films, um, are, you write a script or you have any you have camera to go shoot it, but this was a different approach to making it better. Yeah, what we did is um, basically. I'm not a documentary film. I'm not a. Uh, if you asked me in June of that year if I would have made a really controversial political documentary, I would have laughed and told you no way in hell. I, I made music stuff, and um, this just sort of happened. And this was a story that we just kind of couldn't not tell. It evolved from a TV show that we did, uh, where we did four episodes of this, and then it's sort of it would be just sort of like. All these weird people got involved and kind of kind of encouraged us and we got and the next thing I know we're making a movie and we're getting movie from unlikely things. Um, there was a five hundred dollar check from John Densmore from the door who <laughs> said that pretty much guaranteed that this got made. And we got funded by one of the doors. <laughs> that fucking kicked the doors. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, but what we did with the film is it is really you know, the whole idea of it is a mixtape. It's, it's sort of like exactly when you were trying to like tell your love in college and, and you were into it through other people's songs. That's exactly what we did. And, and we kind of like, we stuck to this rule of like, we can't, we can't solicit footage more than, more than we did. We can't, we have to tell them with what's there and basically with just being able to edit. So it's set up for a really interesting game of doing it. By the way, it's not a way I would recommend to make a film. It's not easy. We did this movie in eight weeks. Anybody uh, who can tell you, anybody who's ever worked on a film will tell you eight weeks to make a feature film. It's really a bad idea. <laughs> because it's, it's, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, acquiring the footage, um, were there any footage that you went after that you couldn't get? Uh, were people really quite fun? Did they want to know what your idea was first? Or were they just kind of here? They, they could do it. Actually, people were awesome about giving us footage, um, and then we searched people out. One thing about this is you'll notice that there's hundreds of thousands of cameras, but what you won't notice is that there's not hundreds of thousands of bits of footage out on the web. There's some of it, and I think a lot of people were like, I'm going to go film this, and I'm going to go make my documentary, and then they didn't, and most of this kind of got taken over. There were things we really wanted. There was the Tim Chernow bit. Uh, Tim Chernow from KCP, who is my new hero after after he saw this, because it's like when you see a journalist quote Marshall McLuhan, it's like, okay, you, we're on, you and I, we can have lunch. And, um, and I really wanted their their camera's version of this, but it had all been taped over. The other thing we really wanted was there was footage we found uh, prior that was the Minneapolis Police Department telling us how they were starting a program to work with protesters and all this to make it safe for everybody. And they made a PSA. And, and I saw a news footage about the PSA, but I couldn't find the PSA anywhere. And I spent tens of hours on the phone with, with police different civil service trying to get footage. And that's the only stuff we couldn't find. But otherwise, everybody was pretty forthcoming. Everybody was pretty great for the most part. And then, you know, oftentimes they make a film have a talent release. So is this footage or anybody that, that's shown there? Is it basically because they were in a public place in an event that's basically free, right? Yeah. Welcome to News. News is a whole other slew of rights, which is awesome. Um, and then because we got footage from other people, uh, they had rights intrinsically. So uh, we had to get rights from them. And basically what we said is we want not exclusive rights. We're just going to do what we're going to do. And, People were really awesome about it because one of the things we could do is so much footage was coming out. And my whole thing about it is all this stuff was coming out on the web and it's going to get lost because it's, because of two weeks from that day, it didn't matter anymore. It was just an archive thing. And by amassing it together, it kind of gives it a different kind of power. And, and there were times, um, the, the, the portion from news, for example, um, when I saw that, it was kind of like, and they're like, wow, isn't this kind of creepy and weird? And I saw it, I'm like, this is the scariest thing I've seen. I mean, this was like, 
to me, is a really powerful moment. I mean, because it's, I'm an American, I can identify it's you know, a young blonde girl in trouble. It's just like CNN. And, and, and it's like, okay, here's this thing, Here, here's a moment that we can get. And all of a sudden, because we can put it in this perspective, I think it becomes a little bit more powerful than just a bit hanging out on the side. I haven't. I, I work downtown St. Paul, so I actually actually got caught in one of the riots uh, when I was just trying to get to go buy a sandwich. Um, were you down there? Was there something that inspired you? I mean, was what, what was the moment, or what was the thing that inspired you to go to work and start collecting footage to make to make this? Well, they. Uh, I basically uh, Northern Lights, which is a new arts organization in town, asked me to be involved in this thing called the Young Convention, which was a big arts. Thing. And that's when we started the TV show. And that's really kind of, uh, basically what inspired me is I got laid off from my job. <laughs> and, and I decided I needed to do something to clear the really awful taste in my mouth. I'm like, well, I need to do something new and big. And, and this general law, it was like, well, this is kind of awesome to do. And, and it was like, and that was really the moment. What happened is we were making an arts TV show for the most part. And then it got weirder and weirder and weirder. And I had to launch with, um, with uh, Chuck Wilson from the Uptake. And the Uptake man, can you just give it up for the Uptake? Just like.